Hello everyone, this is a daily devotional video for February 1st, 2017. Our passage for today is in Genesis chapter 16 and we're reading verses 1 through 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. And she had an Egyptian maidservant, whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, her husband, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarai. Then Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. So he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abraham, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between you and me. So Abram said to Sarai, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarai dealt, dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? And she said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. So the angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for multitude. Um... And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are a child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. <clears throat> then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are the God who sees. For she said, Have I also here seen him who sees me? Therefore the well was called Bear Lahai Roy. Observe, it is between Kadesh and Barad. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. Whew, that's a long passage to read. Oh my goodness. Okay. The old test, sorry, the title for today's devotional, I'm just blown away by everything. I'm so sorry. The title for today's devotional is Abraham's Lesson on Obedience. The Old Testament gives us the account of Abraham's life. While he had a special relationship with God, his faith was not perfect. Over the years, he came to understand the importance of obedience and how costly it can be to rebel. Abraham learned the hard way that manipulating circumstances to gain the desired results can bring heartache. 
God had promised him and Sarah a child, but they were still waiting for that blessing when they were elderly. Already in her 70s, Sarah suggested that Abraham get an heir by having a child with her servant Hagar. The result was jealousy, family strife, and a bloody conflict that still rages today between the descendants of Hagar's son Ishmael and Sarah's son Isaac. Obedience will bring the Lord's best, but it requires waiting on Him. Abraham was already an old man when God promised him descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. Genesis 15, 5. This would not be fulfilled until he was 100, and Sarah was well past her childbearing years, which meant that all the glory for Isaac's miraculous conception and birth went to the Lord. Genesis 21, 1-7, the reference there. Jumping ahead of God has harsh, long-term consequences. But the good news is that the couple's mistakes cannot prevent God from carrying out his plan. The Lord has given us his word so we might learn from the saints of old. The story of Abraham's life teaches us that obedience is essential. I'm going to read that again. The story of Abraham's life teaches us that obedience is essential. When we place our trust in a sovereign God and wait upon his timing, he will always prove faithful. I've had situations in the past when I wanted something so bad, whether it was a personal goal, whether it was an object, whether it was something else, I wanted it so bad, you know, and it's the hardest thing to wait on God's timing, you know. Because you're sitting there thinking, well, this is a good thing that I want. This is a desirable thing that I want. This is a positive thing that I want. So how can God say no when this is something that, that I know he would want me to have or he would want me to do or he would want me to achieve? And so, you know, that that old saying, it, it's easier to get forgiveness and permission. Um, we tend to run ahead of God and do our own thing and obedience to God and waiting on God's timing is essential because he sees the big picture. We just see what's in front of us right now. He sees everything and if we'll just wait on him, trust in him, be obedient to him, we will always, always be better off. I love you guys so much. I hope you have a blessed day. And um, I love you guys so much, and I will see you guys again tomorrow.